Hello, my friends, and welcome to our newest educational. Uh, today, actually, I'm very proud, happy, and excited to bring you this one because it's Nature's Prophet, which is currently one of my favorite heroes. I don't have the best win rate with it overall in terms of the time of my, you know, Dota playing career or whatever. But lately, I really feel like I've figured something out with this hero. I think the hero is very strong in multiple roles, well, especially core role, um, you know, as a carry, as an offlane. The hero is very, very, very solid and it has so many different ways to be played. So I think it's truly just a great hero to make a guide for, to try to enlighten and kind of show people how it can be played or should be played and how also to properly understand the hero. So just before going into it, I think one thing that's important to note is that yes, this hero can carry and is kind of a carry, but this hero should be seen as a tempo hero. The hero only carries a game when he tempos the game. By tempoing the game, what I mean is that taking early towers, having higher net worth than the enemy, opening up the map, because this hero can truly only farm as fast as possible if you also play fast and open up the map. So why do I think that I've won a lot of my recent games? I think it has to do with me understanding a different way of playing the hero, understanding how fast I can play the hero and what items I need in specific games. The ones of you who also watched the Major, you know that the Hark from Bad Boom, he had like 10 different item builds and 11 different games with this hero. Um, but yeah, I would say let's go into demo mode real quick. I won't take too much time on like the talents and what his spells do, because I think everyone understands what Sprout does, everyone understands what TP does, that you have three ends and how your ulti works, right? So obviously your three ends. Uh, you can have two sets of them because they last 60 seconds with a 37 second cooldown. I'll get into that later. You, obviously, you have TP, which will always allow you to potentially uh, TP to base and then TP back into the lane. You have Sprout, which is one of the most important spells on Nature's Prophet nowadays. It didn't used to be this way. Uh, especially paired up with the shard later, it's very broken. Also remember that when you eat a Tango, when you eat a Sprouted tree with Tango, it lasts double the duration. It's 30, uh, 32 instead of 16. There's actually been lanes lately where I go Sprout level 2 and we just both eat the Tango because I don't need TP. Like, I have high mana. Uh, so you just take Sprout and Call and you just, you know, eat. It also allows you to Sprout the enemy and then just block them right after. So that's kind of how the spells work. I will tell you and show you later how to use the ulti properly that you understand how it... Um, the best way to use your ult to get the most amount of damage out of it, basically. Um, I would say that's kind of the basics. We can Item builds are super broad and there's so many, so I really I will have to show you a few replays and the item builds that I went and try to explain why. I will try to fit it all into one video, but there's a high chance I'll make a second part in the future uh, of Nature's Prophet. So... Um, I think items I'll touch on after. Let's look at the talents of this hero and I'll tell you which one you will generally take. So I'm going to touch on this hero from both the carry and the offline roll and I will tell you when which differs. I think level 10, I nearly always prefer the Wrath of Nature base damage talent. Um, unless it's a game where you're looking to farm a lot, you're looking to really pressure a lot, and they don't have good heroes at dealing with the Nature's Call cooldown, then it goes from 37 to 29, which is pretty good. So they're both very strong, but usually I will take the Wrath of Nature, whether I'm carry or offlane. Level 15, I think usually the attack speed is better. 25 attack speed is pretty good. Uh, plus five tree and summoned again. It can be good in the type of lanes, uh, in the type of games where they have either a heroes that aren't good at dealing with summons, or b if they have heroes who get body blocked easily, like a Drow Ranger type hero. You know, like no face boots, no four staff stuff like this. Level twenty, both talents are stupidly broken. By the way, like absolutely. Bonkers talents. 100% missed chance for sprouted units. It means that if you're in a sprout, people can't hit you. Like, let's say you play against a jugger, right? And you sprout yourself. Um, it's going to mean that this guy... I'll, I'll just show it to you. I guess we can just do level max. And we have both, right? Uh, create an enemy. Sure, let's do arc warden. No, let's do a melee hero. Let's do jug. Okay. We have an enemy jugger. We're going to spawn him. We're going to level him up. 
He's gonna have a couple of butterflies. He's gonna have crit, and he's gonna have a quelling blade. So I'm gonna make him start hitting me, and I'm gonna sprout myself and quelling blade, and now he can't hit me. I have a hundred percent evasion against this jugger when I sprout myself. He cannot hit me. And if you play against a range, let's say you play against Medusa and you sprout that hero, he will deal no damage because he is in Sprout and trying to hit out of Sprout. Now, something else that I want to show you is that the leash talent is still broken and it has not been fixed yet. When people... Uh, apparently, he doesn't have TP ready yet, so whatever, let's wait a moment. When people BKB TP out... You can cancel it with the leash talent. When you play against Storm Spirit and he is sprouted, well, he cannot zip out. Look, he cannot zip. Even when he's BKB'd, he cannot zip. So these heroes, they just cannot play Dota. And one of the most used ones that I think you've seen many times is the Pangolier one. When Pangolier rolls and you sprout him, he stops rolling. I don't even know if you need to sprout him or if you can just sprout in his direction and the moment he goes into it, I think it will just stop. Oh, well, I guess I need to choose the Pango, so let's do it again. So, Pango just gets leashed and can't do anything. So you need a four staff to get out of it, like Ember Spirit as well, Ember can Remnant out, he can zip, you can you can cancel, you yeah, basically you cancel BKB TPs. So when you play against Nature's Prophet and like you get close to level 20, you don't necessarily need to buy a Hex or whatever to deal with a Juggernaut. All you need is to Sprout him and he cannot really get out. So what Jug would have to do first is to, uh, he has to use, uh, quelling blade or like spin quelling blade face boot through the tree that you make with the shard and then get out to TP. So this talent is insanely bonkers. Usually the sprout the sprout leash talent is going to be better in nine out of ten games. The mischance can work in some other games. And now level twenty five, you have either no TP cooldown or you have two point five three and HP damage, which is honestly very strong. I'm going to show it to you. When you take this talent, your Greater Tree and steal 170 damage and have 2.4 thousand HP. I'm just going to show you what they're going to do uh, to a tier 1 tower without any help. And as you can see, um, they own a tier 1 tower. They, would, they own tier 3 towers. If you have these two on a building, they just die. And then so in some games you want to go like item builds like this. And then it's going to look a little bit... It's going to look even different. So most of the time, I think the TP cooldown is better, but I've been experimenting with the treant HP damage and it's starting to look really, really solid. And I think it is very underrated. I think the Hawk also takes that sometimes. So I think this hero is an incredible hero as a core from both the safe lane and the off lane. Most generally, I guess we can go to demo mode. I think the items you want to have most of the time uh, most of the time, I'm going to show you the starting build that you go for. I think right now, this is the most cookie-cutter starting build. Uh, you go to lane like this. Because when you get level 2, if you really have to, you can TP to base and then TP back out. You just send yourself a set of tangles with the your first gold. And then you rush treads. So then your item build kind of looks like this. And then I think now it really depends whether you play it carry or offlane. If it's a good Orchid game, you should look to go Orchid first. It will always allow you to like apply a lot of pressure, kill heroes on the map. I think there's like three to four main builds from the off lane, okay, that I like. It's either you rush Orchid, B, you can rush Atos in games where you have not a lot of catch, because Atos can build into Gleipnir later, which gives it a very nice transitioning phase. Um, and it gives you a lot of stats. There's a game where I went Vessel first, because we played against like Timber and Bristleback. I will show you all of those in a moment. And then there's also games, in my opinion, where you can go Witchblade if you're looking to transition more into a right click. It's a hard game to pick off people with Orchid. Like maybe you play against Templar Assassin and PA. I think you can go like Witchblade, Witchblade AC, MKB, or something like this, you know, and you play a bit more on right click. I've seen other people try some builds such as like Wraith Pact into Agonims, which I think can work if you play more around like specific like trying to be a utility type hero i think that can work there's also an agonims build but the ones that i like the most personally is you go either orchid 
Atos, you can also do the same with Maelstrom. Like you go a greedier build and then you go the Gleipnir after, just that you start with Maelstrom and not with Atos. Uh, or the Vessel or the Witchblade. Those, in my opinion, are the best with Orchid being the number one priority. It's usually Orchid, Maelstrom or Atos, I think, as first items and then it differs a little bit. So just to show you those item builds real quick in the other games that we did play. Uh, gameplay footage is going to come up in a moment because we're already, I think, getting at a, a sweet timing. Sadly, I don't have the replay for this game. So I played with uh, Saxa in lane. He was Marcy, I'm Nature's Prophet, and we laned against Bane, Bristleback, which were, it's the Tundra safe lane. It's a Skeeter and Snaking. So this was a very good lane. So we went to lane with Magic Wand, not with the Robe of the Magi. These are your two builds. It's either Magic Wand, Triple Branch, or the Robe of Magi, Triple Branch. And then... In this game, I we actually did the Sprout Tango thing, so I went, as I said, Treads first. In this game, I went, this is the Vessel game, because I played against Bristleback and Timbersaw, and I didn't really want to go for the Orchid right away. Because this hero can really buy whatever you want and whatever you need, so you need to be open, really open. I bought a medallion because the armor is good against BB, but in hindsight, I didn't like it so much. So then I went uh, Silver Edge. Honestly, my build this game should have been Vessel into Silver Edge right away. Silver Edge is obviously super good against Bristleback. It's also really good against Timber. It allows me to kill the supports. And it just gives me a lot of damage, but also mobility. Like It gives you a crit and mobility, more damage, etc. And then I went AC after, just more bonus armor against Bristleback, etc. Uh, by the way, just a random note, because I think I didn't say it in the demo. This hero, I think, has the best shard in the game. Nature's Prophet shard has to be one of the best. It's a big reason why this hero is as good as it is. Okay? We'll, and we'll see it in the gameplay footage in a moment as well. So now the other build that we went for that I wanted to show you was here. I rushed Atos in a game like here. If you look at the game, I had mid timber, support Pugna, support Ricky and a carry TV. Because I remember on the last pick, Sandup was like, oh, we need a stun. And I'm like, actually, we don't need a stun. I'm going to play Nature's Prophet against Drow in lane. It's super good. I can own him in lane and then just go Atos. So now with the Atos, it's also super good in the game with Timber. It sets up for his spell. It's going to give me damage. It gives me 24 damage. It gives me 200 HP. It also gives me attack speed and armor and a catch against these heroes who all die if I just Atos them. And then afterwards, I can still transition into my farming item with the Gleipnir. Because this item is actually very good. I think very underrated right now. And then you can just build into whatever you want. But... Enough said about the item builds, let's look into some actual gameplay and I'll try to teach you uh, how you should be looking to play this hero and why I think that this hero is such a tempo hero, okay? So, you start the game, you want to spawn your treants, you should like ideally look to scout around with your treants in the lane a little bit. I guess there's one more item build you can go for, starting build, it's the Blightstone. Blightstone with one Tango and a lot of Iron Branches. This can work in lanes where you're going to play on a lot of right clicks and you want to abuse specific heroes. I think here, I thought I'm going to lane against Pudge, so I bought a Blightstone in lane, which can work. So like the three builds you have is the Robe, the Glove, and the Blightstone. So here, uh, one thing you can do, in my opinion, I've been starting to do it more, is that with one of the Treants that you have in lane, you want to block the easy camp with them. So like just at 50 seconds, you use one of these Treants, and you send them to the like this spot. You don't want to do it with your second set of treants. Do it with your first set of treants and put one there, okay? So basically, I think pretty straightforward in the early game what you want to do with Nature's Prophet. You want to last it together with your hero and your treants to out CS the enemy, like either last it together, deny it together, etc. So here you just play a lot of pressure. My clock is taking a lot of damage, but we're just going to focus on ourselves purely, right? So what's important with Nature's Prophet is that you try to not let the enemy have more creeps than you because your treants are really weak against enemy creeps if they have more. What you want to do is you want to look at getting as many hits off as possible on the enemy and slowly wiggling them down in terms of their HP and then trying to out CS them. Like right now we have three denies already. This was another game where we did go Sprout to potentially block the Pudge or save my clockwork here. Uh, again, we want to rush treads. Most of the time you want to rush uh, Glove of Haste to give yourself more attack speed and more harass scenario. And then other lanes you're going to want to rush Stake or Magic Wand to let yourself like fight against the enemies, right? So yeah, here we have the laning stage. It's nothing really too crazy here. We get off a little bit of a Sprout into... If you do Sprout and then instantly spawn Treants behind them and you micro them, it's very easy to block people. But of course, he has Flesh Heap. It's not so easy for us to deal damage to his hero. But we apply a good amount of pressure. We're a bit low on mana now, fine. 
gonna use our courier soon. So for now, the laning is pretty straightforward. You wanna use your treants, try to block some camps, contest all the camps, get as much farm as you can. Basically, number one priority, get all the CS that you can and try to deny creeps, hit the enemy. Very straightforward gameplay, right? Now, TP back to lane. Usually when you TP back to lane, you can look for a kill by TPing behind them with Sprout and Trium block, or you just spawn Trians with your mana region from the fountain, and then you heal up. So now we have Treads, we're getting to level five, so we're actually very strong now. We're playing this here, we do the, basically what you wanna do is you should have a hotkey for select all other units. It's in the advanced hotkeys here. So whenever I press three, I will select everything that is not my hero. So here, you Sprout, I ping the dude, I'm like, yo, let's kill him. Sprout, I spawn Treants behind him, I leave my hero to auto-attack him, and now I press 3, and I move my Treants the way I want to. Look here, and now I just have a full block on him because he messed up, and he's gonna die. So now this is already the perfect setup for me to play Nature's Prophet and play fast. My Treads died on the Courier, I now have a Magic Wand ready to be built. I ping my Siege Creep, I ping my Double Wave, I want to play aggressive. Right now, you hit level 6 early, you want to do one of two things. You want to either A, pressure down here and take this tower, or you ulti for someone else to either get a kill top, or maybe get a kill mid. So here, I instantly tell my clock, yo, go mid, I'm gonna have ult. I ulti the Doom, I TP mid, we get a kill on the mid guy and it nearly helped my Ember to get the rune too. So this helped a lot. In the meantime, I run back bottom, I'm gonna pressure the lane. And this is definitely, this is an Orchid game. I think Orchid is really good against your heroes. I mean, you can also buy Deso or Vessel against Pudge, which is very good, but I think you can eventually build the Orchid into Bloodthorn against Pudge. Orchid also will help me to kill both their supports because they need to protect themselves with spells. And I think it's also good against uh, Razor to like not have a link me. So here we use our ulti again bottom to help our team push some waves. We take the tower for free. I play it safely with my hero. The tower is already dead. I can just set my tree and kill it. Cool. So here we look around, always be ready to, you know, always be on the lookout. If you can TP somewhere, get a kill, take a tower, because like I said, this is a tempo hero. So here we take the bottom tier one, we push in the lane. I think here I actually died because I misplayed. Did I die? Yeah, so this was a silly death by me, but whatever, it happens. After you like take this tier one, I don't need, really need to use my hero to push in the lane that much, but okay. I bought uh, the little claymore for myself. Yeah, I bought the claymore here to just give myself more damage. And for the orchid here, I see that the smart is bottom with low, uh, low mana. So I just TP on him, I ulti beforehand. So the way you want to use ult is that if you want the ulti to hit bottom, right? So the way ult works is that you use it, it deals 115 base damage, and then every time it bounces, it deals 10% more with 18, dam 18 bounces on the map. So here when I spawn, you need to remember that a lot of wards really own my ult and make it not good. So here when I respawn, I want to hit the guy bottom, which means usually you want to use it on the opposite side of the map. So here, I'm going to start with the ulti top, that's five targets. There's one target mid, and now there's a few targets here, right? Look, it's going to bounce here. Then here, and now on whichever one I see next. So by the moment I TP on Marcy, it will hit him. But if there's like, if there's another ward here that sees these creeps, then suddenly my ulti will be stopped and I cannot use it. Then I actually have to start bottom. Actually, I don't quite know. I think if you start it mid, it will go mid and then top and then bottom because I think the top lane here is closer to this than this lane is to this lane. Like top mid is closer than mid bottom. So that's something to take note. If there's a lot of wards, you will usually have to use the ulti on the lane where they do this, and then it won't deal so much damage, or you wait for creeps to die, but it can be pretty annoying. So if there's two jungle wards that see your creeps and their creeps, your ulti will usually be pretty weak, okay? So yeah, anyway, we TP bottom, we body block him, we get this guy killed, good. Now we wanna speed up the game. There's like two phases of Nature's Prophet. In the lane, you just focus on yourself, then you try to push out lanes as much as you can with three ends. You look for TPs around always, as you can see. We get a double kill here. Now, when you get your Orchid, it's a new timing. You instantly wanna use your Orchid to kill a hero on the map. Tell your dudes to like go around, I have Orchid, I wanna kill someone. Like here, I'm looking to TP. We TP on the pod, we kill him. I don't even have to do anything. I normal TP top to maybe make a play there. And now your item, your item builds usually align in a way where you can buy Orchid into Shard, Witchblade into Shard, Vessel into Shard, Witchblade into Shard, Atos into Shard. Like one item into Shard, depending on your game. Because the Shard is so, so strong. I mean, in this game, I'm even so fat that I think I can buy a small item before Shard, like maybe a Mithril Hammer 
or uh, something like that. So here I'm actually deciding to go Shadow Blade because I feel like, again, having Silver Edge against Doom, having this maneuverability, is really nice against their people because they have a lot of heroes that if one guy gets on me, I'm gonna die. So I like Shadow Blade, it helps me scale, it gives you attack speed damage, helps you pick off, and I just have like this downtime of gold before I can buy the shard, right? So right now, push in lanes, Help kill with your ulti, TP in when you can, and otherwise look for towers. I would say this mid tower is even a little bit late at minute 14, but it's still okay. Here we go mid. I think this doesn't actually look that good. We may die. No, we don't. Our Void comes in. He helps us. Great. So now we chill. And again, Nature's Prophet, like other heroes, you want to make sure you don't overcommit and die. Because when you die on this hero, it really hurts you. Because this hero farms the whole map and keeps map control in your favor at all times if you don't die. So here... We see that the Rubik is coming bottom, we Orchid him, we Sprout him, he tries to TP out. So the moment, what happens when you play Nature's Prophet against these heroes, if they have a Quelling Blade, you don't want to kill the trees, right? Because then when they use it themselves, he could try to, I mean, obviously he can't get away because the tree end will be swamped. But the moment he TPs, you should use Nature's Call to kill all the trees and give you tree ends and the big trees to deal damage into the damage of the Orchid, right? If they're not TPing out, you don't use Nature's Call. You just let them use a Quelling Blade, spawn a big tree end. And then at the end of the Sprout, that's when you use it to get the tree ends. But if you need the damage during their TP out, you use Nature's Call to break all the trees and spawn them yourself. So here again, we kill the guy bottom. Nature's Prophet is also here where you want to be alert on the map at all times, right? Like I'm pushing bottom. Now Marcy TP bottom, I'm like, yo, kill this guy top. What is he doing? I see that I don't have to TP there, so I don't. Now I see that there's a Pudge, so I TP top. Maybe a little bit too aggressive, because I remember I die here. I mean, also with Flesh Heap, I take zero damage. He takes zero damage, right? Because I think I end up dying here. No, actually I don't. Oh, so it was fine. We pressure bottom, and because we pressure bottom and some do TP there, we now have an opening to go kill them somewhere else. So basically this shard, it ruins every hero. It's something I just have to talk about. Like The way you play against Nature's Prophet is that you need Quelling Blade plus Phase Boots to get out, because when you cut the tree and you don't have Phase Boots, it doesn't do anything. There's a big tree and looking at you, hitting you. Or you need a four Staff, or you need to hope to get Spider Legs later. So here, there's a Razor. He is Tumblr's toy, so I just need to hit him fast. So basically what I do uh, here, again, I TP on him. I'm going to Orchid him, which is obviously Orchid gives me a lot of damage. And then later he takes more damage. So here, Sprout, hit. Honestly, I should have Orchided him earlier. I don't know why I waited so long. But I'm just hitting him. He's going to end up dying because I deal too much damage. And he dies. So look, for, look to TP aggressively to get pickoffs. And just make sure that you TPing in doesn't cost you dying. At least when it's a pickoff, it can never cost your death. If it's a team fight and it's going to be a good team fight, then you can TP very aggressively, like aggressively on a Bane to kill him or a Rubik or whatever. So here again, we want to take a tier 2 tower now to open up the map with the shard. It's usually one of the things you want to look at. A tier 2 tower, progress the map, take the outpost, etc. Um... I think I finished my Shadow Blade. I'm looking for Lincolns now against Doom, etc. I just want to keep the game going, play fast, push out lanes, farm Ancients when I can, and just continuously pick people off, really. That's kind of like the name of the game here. TP top, I push, put all my Treants on the Rubik. I think here is the fight where I probably die because we play a bit too aggressive. Yeah, so here it's an overplay, and it instantly shows when you overplay with this hero, you are just going to die. Like, you will just die. So here now, when the game becomes in a state where it's maybe not super easy to fight, you want to split push a bit. And I actually want to go into the late game to show you the talents. So here, I buy back, I TP mid. Let's have a look at these treants. Marcy instantly buys back to stop it. They take the tier 3 tower. He uses Marcy ult. And I nearly even get the rack still. Because right now, I mean, we're far ahead. We're throwing the game. But they can't actually ever push out because they constantly need to defend the base. And I think this is where the tree and HP damage challenge is insane. I just got the mid racks. I just got the mid melee racks and range racks. Like, look at this. Like, here. Marcy has no ult left, so my treants just kill the tower. They just take the melee racks. Now there's new treants coming. They take the range racks. Now I sent them top to deal some damage there. And it just becomes very toxic to deal with. But so, okay, this is going to be one game, okay? Where Nature's Prophet, it just goes to show you tempo, 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 this hero. But I would like to show you a quick game where I played as a carry. Because I think it plays a little bit different from the carry role. It wants to play like potentially 
It wants to play potentially even a little bit faster because you sometimes have a better game or more experience. And you have this really nice play where you can TP from the safe lane into the off lane to pressure this hero and take its tower. That's usually what you want to look for when you play safe lane Nature's Prophet. So again, one of the three item builds, you want to spawn your treants. You want to spawn your treants right as the game starts to scout and then usually like 10-ish seconds. You can, depending how good you are at blocking, you want to spawn another set of treants like around creep spawn, like around here. Because when the creeps meet around 30 to 40 seconds that you have two set of treants. So here... I contest the rune, I spawn another set of treants right away, like right after creep spawn. Now, if we block a bit, you know, we should have blocked a bit so that we're closer to having the double set of treants. So around the creep, the, you should spawn your first set of treants a few seconds before the bounty runes, if you're contesting bounty runes, otherwise you can do it a bit later if you're gonna block. So the way you wanna play Nature's Prophet in the safe lane is that you wanna try to not lose lane control too fast. You, the longer you get to hold the waves together, the better. So that's why people will usually try to inter, like separate the waves like this, like he is doing on Bad Rider. So here they do this. So I don't actually want these creeps to be held up here. I want to run down with them and hit them, right? Like he has power shot, no wind run, he has sticky napalm. I want to just hit them all the time when they want to pull like this. The only thing that's scary when you play Nature's Prophet is if they have a lot more creeps than you. So here I realize, okay, we can't do it much more. We need to take these up and hit them. Okay, Magic Wand, because they have Bad Rider and uh, Wind Ranger. Hit them as much as we can, always with the Treants. Secure all the lasses that we can. And let's just keep playing aggressive, right? That's kind of the name of the game. I think this is another also great lane where Sprout is really good. And I think where we will end up going Sprout. So they, the enemy team is actually doing okay in this lane right now. I think we're not doing as good as we should, slash could. We should probably have gone Frostbite level 1 or I should have played more aggressively, but either way, it's fine. Make sure that we stay on high HP. We should hit down a few creeps right now, because otherwise they will have a lot more than us. So we're gonna send boots. Now we're starting to be level two on CM, so we're dealing a lot of pressure, which is great. And now we wanna keep, the best thing you can do with natures is to play on the side or behind the wave. You continuously hit them and you don't lose the lane control so that when they run up to aggro the creeps, you're gonna keep hitting them. Right now, I think level 3 is a big timing for you because you get not only a bonus treant, but also the damage goes up by nearly 50%. So you get another treant plus 50% damage increase. It really stacks up and it's going to be a lot. And remember that it's really easy to block heroes. Like here, this bad rider, I could force... The good thing is when I sprout him here, I can force his firefly or whatever. If, I, if I'm Because now when I block him... He has to use Firefly to kind of stay alive. Because here, what you can see is that we deal so much pressure to him. So we're going to go in, we sprout, we spawn our treants, we hit them. Like this trade is going to be really good for us. We have all these stick charges to play with. Now we start, once the bad rider is out of range, we just start hitting the wind ranger. For some reason, he doesn't have wind run. So he just gets frostbitten and he dies again. Now hold the wave here as long as we can. So we deny creeps and we basically reset the lane. The lane is in a great position. Here I see this bad rider. He wants to run up and aggro the creeps. I'm like, nope. I'm going to deny all your creeps, and as soon as my CM is around, slash close by, I can go for a play again here. I have 19 stick charges, so we're fine. I'm going to be able to sprout and to block him again soon. I'm getting close to my treads, which is like the first big item timing in the lane. Another range deny. Focus on denies. I would really say the biggest part when you play this hero as a carry is to hold the wave in this position and hit them as much as you can without losing the lane equilibrium. So now they pulled the side cam, which kind of sucks for us. We should not have let them do this. But anyway, I'm going to kill these creeps fast so that I can take this creep wave and pull it into the next one and then reset it one more time. Now we have the wave here again, which, as we've stated many times, is so important here. We sprout him. I saw that he has no tango. He could firefly to get out. He should have done that. But anyway, he messed up and he's just going to straight up die again. We go on this guy. He's going to die as well. Sprout. And he dies too. They're playing pretty poorly, but this just goes to show you what you can do. And remember, these guys are not bad players. It's a rank 40 and rank 100 EU, which is high rank, obviously. So here, we tried for a sprout again. Didn't really work out. Boom, boom, boom. Here, we spawn treants. Now, when you're in this position, again, kind of similar to earlier, you want to either pressure your lane a lot or force use this pressure to pressure somewhere else so here bad rider kind of overplays i can turn around very early on in this fight already i have a lot of six charges just need to be a bit careful about the burn we kill the bad rider again we get close to level six we should stop chasing i tp out because the pango came 
he rolled at a very bad timing. Again, we're going Orchid. We want to play fast. Orchid is good against Bat. Orchid is good against their supports. It allows me to kill their supports. It allows me to kill Bat. It allows me to kill Pango. So Orchid is just the way to go. Gives you mana reach and gives you damage, gives you attack speed. So again, in my opinion, this is just the best build on Nature's Prophet. It also pairs up really well with what I'm stating where you want to play the hero with tempo, you want to play fast, etc. If you play Nature's Prophet against like Naga and PL, then you may want to look at rushing Maelstrom into Gleipnir, Maelstrom into Mjolnir with BKB and play like that if you have no one else to deal with it, okay? Like in this game, if they had a PL, I think I would still go Orchid to tempo up the game and kill all the others because I have Timber, Void Spirit and CM to deal with the PL, okay? So it always, always depends on what you want to do. But here again, we I use my ulti for bottom. It's going to help them to kill the Treant. I get some bonus gold. I get an assist. Here, I have my Treants. I'm going to try to deny some creeps from the Bad Rider. I think I did one. In the meantime, I killed the Harkham. Because right now, I don't want to pressure the tower too hard. Or I will if I can. But if I overplay, it's just going to allow the Pango to come and kill me. That's why here... Like, I'm going to hit him nicely until I see, I see Pango in the bottom lane. I'm going to keep hitting them, keep hitting them, keep hitting them, keep hitting them. Farm every creep in the lane, deny when I can, my voice spirit comes over. Again, Pango comes, he fucks up a bit, I get to live. I have a lot of stats with Magic Wand and the Iron Branches. So now I TP base, and when I TP base, I tell them, yo, I have ulti, I use it for middle. I TP, I don't know if I do end up TPing, yeah, I TP in, Sprout, Triumph block, he has no spells, so he's going to end up dying. So again, we get another cool kill. Also, another cool thing with Sprout that I want to show you is that you don't always have to Sprout them. You can Sprout the vicinity or the their trail that they're moving. Like here, I can actually block off his path. Even though I use it here, the Sprout reaches a bit further ahead, right? So here, here, he gets blocked, he uses Stone Gaze, so... We kill the Pango, we force Stone Gaze, we force like all the heroes to middle. Now we can probably pressure the mid tower a bit. They have three in Protector, so it's really nice to take this tower. And again, tempo, 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 tempo. That's how we play this hero. I think here we probably lingered mid tower a little bit too much. Now we do end up getting it. And again, make sure you always want to look at the map. We hit the mid tower, but I'm already looking top. See, I'm already looking. This is my perspective. I see him. I use my ulti. I'm not sure where I use my ulti, actually. I should be using it bottom. Yeah, I use my ulti bottom, so it's currently flying to top. I TP top, and we kill the bad rider. We took mid tower, we TP top, we kill bad rider. Now we push in the top wave. And here again, see, I'm not gonna hit this tower, because right now we already got mid tower, we already got bot tower. The only place they can really go to is top to try and kill us. We're up 5k gold, we have a killing spree, we don't want to feed that. What, we, what we're gonna do now is just get our orchid, and then make a new play, because with orchid we will kill anyone on this entire map. And then after Orchid, it again, it pairs up perfectly with Shard, and we will literally just kill them on the entire map of Shard. So here, we TP in, but I'm kind of looking to do it nicely. I don't want to overcommit. So I actually cancel my first TP. I'm going to use my ulti. It hits all the heroes. I Orchid the tree, and he's going to die. We're up 7k gold. I mean, this game is kind of a stomp. But I just want to show like all the timings and how to play. So now that they're all dead and they've used their spells, I TP, I take the top tower. I can now Orchid defensively from the bat to not die to him. We TP here. And something else you can do with Prophet, which is really cool, is that you can always TP defensively and farm this twice. Or ideally now, around this timing, you can TP here at like 1250, 1150, 1350 and always stack farm these camps. Because you can farm defensively and still be aggressively at the same time because you have ult and teleportation, right? So here again, TP aggressively, use Orchid, not overplay, you know, just kind of playing it nicely. Now we get our shard. I mean, we can't even, again, we're so fat that we can't buy shard because it's too early. And here we did exactly what I talked about. We get to go here, stack the camp, farm this. Now we basically get to farm it twice. I think here, whatever, we throw a bit, but let, let's show the next play. So we buy the shard, the game is paused. We buy the shard, we respawn, he's gonna die. So now once you have shard, you can either look for A, more kills, or B, just easier kills on the map and more push. So as you can see here, we do exactly what I mentioned earlier. We push out the top lane with shard plus treants, now we TP to the triangle, we stack the hard camp, we stack the ancients, because we can just, we can push everything and then fall back as late as possible to double farm this. So here I'm looking, I ulti for them, I don't even have to TP, since I don't have to TP I can stay here, I can farm the ancients, just sprout and tree and again, kill all the ancients, 
TP top, didn't even need to, he dies. Now we go BKB Roche, and you just keep playing of tempo, 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 tempo. I mean, this didn't work out because we didn't need to do it, but just tempo, tempo, play fast, try not to die, use all the timings we have, TP Sprout, TP Orchid, etc. Silver Edge, I just really like it. And maybe we look at one more quick laning stage. This video is getting pretty long. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Like, I just think the shard on this hero is so strong. Uh, I don't have too many more replays I can show, sadly, because some of them are old or I can't download them for whatever reason. Um, I mean, here we had a game where we played a couple days ago against Ramses. We had a really hard early game. But in this game, we went Maelstrom into Gleipnir because even though I was offlane, I had a mid clockwork, so I needed to carry a bit. So in this game, we did the build where I go Maelstrom first to scale and then get the Atos for catch. So this item not only allowed me to scale, but also have catch against the heroes and kind of semi counter the Naga Siren, yeah? So this hero, I think, is really strong. It plays mainly on tempo, as I've played, as I've said many, many times now. You want to try to get good at the Sprout into the blocking, right? The Sprout into the Treant uh, blocking. I want to show a few more cases for like the Shard, just how it's good and how you want to use it. You can also Sprout yourself and TP out a lot of times, which is very useful. And I just want to show you like Sprout against heroes that can't get out when you have the Shard, like how strong it is. So let's say I have Orchid, Shard, Treads. We find, yeah, let's just say we find a Pangolier, okay? Pango is level, whatever. You're level 15 Pangolier, okay? With a Quelling Blade. And you have Treads, because you don't buy, uh, like, you don't buy phase boots on this hero. So we have Sprout, and we TP on this guy, right? We TP on this Pango. We Orchid him, we Sprout him. He tries to get out, but he can't, because he's Orchided. Like, he's Orchided, but he also can't run out of the Sprout, because the moment he uses Quelling Blade, he is owned by the tree, right? So, Orchid, Sprout, we hit him. Honestly, he shouldn't even use Quelling Blade, because it just gives me more damage. He should just wait, or like he has to buy a Yules or four stuff. So, like, this shard, you want to use it to kill people, or also to just push, because these Treants have 1600 HP with 108 damage, and there's so many more things you can do with Nature's Prophet. You can scout on the map with your Treants, you can block camps with your treants and so on, push waves, etc. Remember the ulti, how to use it. When people BKB TP out, you can cancel it with the leash talent. When you play against Storm Spirit and he is sprouted, well, he cannot zip out. Look, he cannot zip. Even when he's BKB'd, he cannot zip. So these heroes, they just cannot play Dota. And one of the most used ones that I think you've seen many times is the Pangolier one. I didn't really want to go for the Orchid right away. Because this hero can really buy whatever you want and whatever you need. So you need to be open, really open. I bought a medallion because the armor is good against BB, but in hindsight I didn't like it so much. So then I went uh, Silver Edge. Honestly, my build this game should have been Vessel into Silver Edge right away. Silver Edge is obviously super good against Bristleback. It's also really good against Timber. It allows me to kill the supports. And it just gives me a lot of damage, but also mobility. Like it gives you a crit and mobility, more damage, etc. And then I went AC after, just more bonus armor against Bristleback, etc. Uh, by the way, just a random note, because I think I didn't say it in the demo. This hero, I think, has the best shard in the game. Nature's Prophet shard has to be one of the best. It's a big reason why this hero is as good as it is. Okay, so now we have Treads, we're getting to level 5, so we're actually very strong now. We're playing this here, we do the, basically what you want to do is you should have a hotkey for select all other units. It's in the advanced hotkeys here. So whenever I press 3, I will select everything that is not my hero. So here, you Sprout, I ping the dude, I'm like, yo, let's kill him. Sprout, I spawn Treants behind him, I leave my hero to auto-attack him, and now I press 3, and I move my Treants the way I want to. Look here, and now I just have a full block on him because he messed up, and he's gonna die. So the way you want to use ult is that if you want the ulti to hit bottom, right? So the way ult works is that you use it, it deals 115 base damage, and then every time it bounces, it deals 10% more with 18, dam 18 bounces on the map. So here when I spawn, you need to remember that a lot of wards really 
own my ult and make it not good. So here when I respawn, I want to hit the guy bottom, which means usually you want to use it on the opposite side of the map. So here, I'm going to start with the ulti top. That's five targets. There's one target mid, and now there's a few targets here, right? Look, it's going to bounce here, then here, and now on whichever one I see next. So by the moment I TP on Marcy, it will hit him. You can, depending how good you are at blocking, you want to spawn another set of treants like around creep spawn, like around here. Because when the creeps meet around 30 to 40 seconds, that you have two set of treants. So here, I contest the rune, I spawn another set of treants right away, like right after creep spawn. Now, if we block a bit, you know, we should have blocked a bit so that we're closer to having the double set of treants. So around the creep, the, you should spawn your first set of treants a few seconds before the bounty runes, if you're contesting bounty runes. Otherwise, you can do it a bit later if you're gonna block. I think I wanna cut this video here because it's already very long. It's longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, if you guys have any questions or if you think there should be a second part, maybe more in-depth with different item builds, like showing an item build where we go Vessel, an item build where we go Desso, how to play the mid game, how to play the late game properly, stuff like this. Because now I think I focus more on like the basics, how to play fast, what items you want, what you want to abuse, when to TP, how, where to look at on the map, how to use your ulti, what are the objectives and so on, and what the overall item builds are. But if you want to see more or something else or something specific or you have a question, like just ask a question on YouTube. I will see it. I will answer it. We will do another video if there's a lot of demand or and if people want to see it. But with that said, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this educational. Thank you to Bitburger for always supporting me and the stream and my YouTube and helping me to make great content. And shout out to all of you for watching. I will continue to make videos, especially now that I'm not in a team. I have more time on my hands. I want to make content. I want to be there for you guys. I want to help you all improve. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being there. I have a great community. I'm very grateful for it. I'm grateful for all of you watching. And overall, I just hope you enjoy. Okay, so hope you enjoy. Let me know how it goes. Let me know what you want to see next. Let me know what you think overall. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.